Psalm 62. We're going to look at some scriptures today. Psalm 62 to the chief musician, to Jethuthum, a psalm of David. Truly my soul waited on God. David says, my soul is going to God. From him, God continues my salvation. Salvation rests in God. He only is my rock and my salvation. All right. First Corinthians 10, 4. 1 Corinthians 10, 4. Let's shoot some religions down today. why they don't want you to open up the Bible. 1 Corinthians 10, 4. <coughs> David says, The rock. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So, David says he is my rock and salvation. Paul says that rock is Christ. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, 31. For their rock, small r, is not as our rock. Capital R. Oh, there's two rocks. Paul says that one of them rocks is Christ. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. We got a problem here. Matthew 16, 18, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now there is one group of people that say Peter is their rock that builds on their church. Well, there's two rocks. Paul says that rock is Christ. Deuteronomy says there's a capital R and there's a small r. He said, well, why isn't it capital here? Jesus is pointing to himself as a human. Jesus, and I can't, you know, you won't be able to say, see this on, on the audio, but the video is Jesus upon this rock. Pointing to himself, not Peter. So there's a problem that people will say, hey, we got a rock and it's a man and it's not the man Christ Jesus. And we have a rock that Paul says is Christ Jesus. And when you say that your rock is Peter, you're wrong. And Paul told the Corinthian church that there's another Jesus out there. Quite interesting. So, verse 2, he only is my rock. God, verse 1, and my salvation. Verse 1 and verse 2, Luke chapter, I think, this one I didn't write down, I was going to, but I did it. Luke chapter 1, I think it's 1. Maybe Matthew. Uh, Matthew, yeah, Matthew chapter 1, 21. Get who this rock is. Already blasted the Catholics and blew them out of the water. You ready for Jehovah Witnesses? And she shall bring forth a son, Mary. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, we're not done, are we? For he, Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. Would you not say that that saved is a salvation? Did not Paul say that that rock is Jesus or Christ? Let's go back to let's go back to the Psalms and let's blow them out of water. Verse one. Truly, my soul waited for God. For Him continually, for Him cometh my salvation. 
He only is my rock to, and my salvation. God, the rock. Well, guess who God is? It's Jesus Christ. It's not Peter. And it's not a non-God Jesus because God is Jesus and Jesus is God. You just blew two religions out of the water in two verses. And we blew them out of water many places. Because wait, we blew them out of water, First Corinthians. We blew them out of water, Deuteronomy. We blew them out of water, Matthew 16. And we blew them out of water, Matthew 1. You sank my religion. I shall not be greatly moved. That's important for the Christian. We have that sure foundation. They shall never depart out of my hand. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? He's talking to the to, to men now. How long are you going to grieve another man? How long are you going to come up with ideas to do trouble to another man? That's the world. He shall be slain, all of you. Ye shall be slain, all of you. Those are thinking of mischief. As a bowing wall, that means a wall is it's leaning. It's not going to stay up very long. Shall ye be. You have no structure. You have. You're not reliable. And as a tottering, that means shaky, fence. You're defiling your purpose. If anybody comes up to it, you can just move the fence out of the way. That's the only time fence shows up in the Bible, by the way. They only consult those of that imagine mischief to cast him down from his excellency. You know, I'm going to do what I can. I'll step on whoever I'll step on to get where I'm going to go. They delight in lies. I mean, that sounds like politicians. They'll do anything to get that seat in the office. I'll tear anybody down so I can get that position. And we all know the politician stands like a used car. They're liars. Many are liars. They bless with their mouth. Oh, I'm just so good. I'm so honest. I'm so great. Vote for me. I'm just so wonderfully great. But they curse inwardly. Of, they're double tongued. Yeah, I, you know, look how great I am. You miserable little scumbag. You know, you know, uh, I don't want to even be in your presence. How dare you even stand in front of me? I just like you guys all. You're just so wonderful and great. Sila. You say, well, there's that musical rest. Where's the second advent? Repeat it. My soul waits thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Well, what are the Jews going to be doing when it gets closer and closer to the second advent? They're going to be waiting for God. Who's God? Jesus Christ, second advent. There it is. That won't be dedicated to Jehovah's Witnesses because they're not looking for God. Because they don't believe Jesus is God. They haven't come to realize 144,000 are Jewish virgin males. Ooh -ooh. And then the Jehovah's Witness movement has way past 144,000. Ooh -ooh. And many of the Jehovah's Witnesses that come to my door are women. Ooh -ooh. And then when the men do come, sometimes they bring their children. Uh-oh. Coming to the doorstep with your child has already told me you are a deceiver, you are a liar, because those 144,000, which you're probably a number billion, whatever it is, are virgins. Virgins don't... Uh-oh. Are you trying to say something else? Because there's only one virgin that had a child. That was Mary. 
Why are you coming to my door proclaiming to be one of those, those Jewish proselytes in the tribulation period and have a child? Liar. All right, move on. My soul wait thou only upon God and my expectations from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. Now, we looked at Matthew 1, 21. Guess who that is? Jesus. He shall save his people. He'll definitely save them during the tribulation period. At the end, when he comes back, the second advent, he'll call upon any any Jew that calls upon Jesus. Uh, Romans chapter 10, either whether Jew or Greek, I mean, uh, whether Greek or Jewish, any that calls upon Jesus, he'll save them. That salvation is the name of Jesus, Jehovah saved. 1 Timothy 1.15 1 Timothy 1.15 1 Timothy 1.15 1 And this is a faithful saying, and worthy of all expectation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. There it is. Look at chapter 2, verse 5. Let's, let's kick the Catholics again. I love kicking. For there is one God. Okay. And one meeting between God and man. Men. The man Christ Jesus. So the Catholic Church says Mary is a meteoratrice between God and men. Mary's a female. That verse in the Bible says the man, not the woman, the man. Catholics long before college students today don't know the difference between male and female. Mary don't fit. So back in chapter 62, verse 7, God is my salvation. That is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, Deuteronomy 32, Matthew 16, Matthew 1, and 1 Timothy 1. God is my salvation. And that's a Jewish man saying that. He came unto his own. His own received him not. Some will receive him at the second advent. My glory. There it is again. The rock of my strength. And my refuge. Refuge is to flee. Guess what the Jews are going to do in the tribulation period? And he's going to give them wings of the great eagle and fly her off into the wilderness. Selah. There it is. There it is. Surely men of low degree are vanity. You're common, Joe. You're your blue collar worker, average person, and men of high degree, rich, hold good positions, employee, employers, owners, are alive. Oh, David. And you know what mostly gets a man into a high position? If he's not born into it, most likely he's lied himself into that. Most likely. Not all. Most likely he's lied himself into it. Listen, most of the politicians throughout American history have lied to get themselves where they are. Find me one politician. Give me the name. And give me all the political promises he made on the campaign trail. And... Tell me 100% of them by a list that did all that he promised. Well, you know, the certain, no, no circumstances. Did he say it? And did he do it? He didn't do it, but he said it. That's a lie. And all the lies that he said once he got into that office. But the certain, there's no circumstances. I tell you what a Christian is to do. I'm going to Lord willing. Lord willing. I don't know what's going to happen. To be laid in balance. God's going to weigh it out. 
How did you get that position? How did you get where you got? Was it honest and right? Or was it lies and deceit? It'll be weighed out. They are altogether the low degree and the high degree, lighter than vanity. <laughs> you know what? You're nothing. If I can't even say I was gonna say it. if there was no God, you can't even say that because there'd be no man. But if God were to, if God made the creation and God stepped back and said, you know what, I'm, I don't want to have anything to do with you guys. We all die and go to hell. We would go to the same hell. And yet the Bible speaks about different degrees in hell, but we would all go to hell. The rich man and the man that <coughs> that's homeless. And not all homeless men or beggars on the street are who they say they are. And cameras have proved that. God's going to weigh it out. There are people that, that promote themselves as who they're not. And get away with it. God will weigh it out. Listen, you think every person in a Baptist church is right and correct. You, you're fool. You think anybody that stands behind some kind of pulpit in any of the religious churches, synagogues, whatever they call themselves, if you think they're all correct and right and going to heaven, you have fooled yourself. And God's going to weigh it out. But what is man? Nothing. And even in Jesus Christ, what we just read about, what am I? I'm nothing. Well, you're going to heaven, you're a Christian. By Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Without Jesus Christ, I go to hell. With someone who did not have Christ. Who don't have anything to do with God in the Bible or anything. I end up in the same hell with him. We put too many degrees on people of pristine and and of fame and riches and, and the multi-billion could doing air if he if he rejects God he goes into hell the man that owns all the hotels on Mopoli and if he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ he's going to the same New Jerusalem I'm going There's only one difference as far as Christian. All right, we're all saved by Jesus Christ, but what do we do with Jesus? Some don't do nothing. Some go and do what they're supposed to do. That's the only difference of man. Trust not in oppression. Don't be a hard employer. And make your employees, I mean, like the bondage Israel, uh, Egypt had to Israel in the book of Exodus. I'm going to make them sit at their desk and they're going to do their work. And every second of the moment, they're going to do their death work. And they can only have a potty break during their 15-minute lunch. That's ridiculous. Got to rule with the rod of iron. And then you'll get that rule of iron when Jesus Christ gets your back. Now, there are things that have to be done in a business. There are things that have, I mean, you got to have a little force. But, you know, trust not in oppression. And become not vain in robbery. Don't use stealing to get ahead in business or in your life. God is going to hold you. The Bible says, "Thou shalt not steal." And many business, many businesses, not all, many businesses are in business today, and many businesses are where they are today because they had manipulated the people, they had oppressed the people, and they had stolen to get where they are today. You know, when we get to the fact that you know, I've heard preachers preach against uh, you know bankruptcy. 
and then they praised Donald Trump. Donald Trump went bankrupt, as far as I know, twice. These great businesses today, they've gone bankrupt. They have stolen money. And they're still in business. And the very first thing they do is they lay off their employee. That's stealing. That's oppression. Now you had your employees live a hard life because you didn't know how to do anything. Meanwhile, while you soaked in the money into your corporate office and all that, God will weigh it all out. If riches increase, if you get rich, set not thy heart upon them. And this is where Paul would write to us, the love of money is the root to all evil. Now let me tell you, J.C. Penney was a rich Christian. He gave his employees days off to go to church. Money did not become a god to him. And if you are a Christian, you are saved, and God has blessed you with money, don't depend on the money. Do not put the money as your God. Because there's a period of time in American history, we had the, the Depression. People were jumping out of windows, killing themselves, because their money was no more no good. And you have taken your trust off God, look at verse 8, trust in him, God, at all times. David and Paul warned, okay, if God were to bless you with money, and I'm not saying God's not going to, because he has. There has been people in business that have given their, 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 their profit to missionaries, and God's blessed them more. You're not to make any excess money your God. And notice how it says, if the riches increase, it doesn't say how much. You don't come at the end of the month, all your bills are paid, you know, and you got the groceries, you got the gas, and then, you, you know, at the end of the month, you find yourself five extra dollars. Whoa! I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to, yeah, I deserve it. Or you get this familiar thing to happen. I'm going to go into business. Oh, I got my first dollar, and they put it in a frame on the wall. I wonder how many businesses have gone under with a dollar in a frame on the wall somewhere. Where they could have used that dollar to pay something. And it doesn't say how much riches. Any riches. Set thy heart, set not thy heart upon them. Thank the Lord he's given it to you and hey, take the family out, have a family good time with it. Thank the Lord for it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. David said God spoke and then God repeated himself. Look at that. There, there's a verily, verily. David said, verse 2, he is only my rock. Look at verse 6. He only is my rock. David said, hey, listen, I said he's my only rock. He's my only rock. David said God spoke twice. Did not Jesus say verily, verily? Look at all the times that God mentions the tabernacle. Look how many times God mentions the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I heard this. David heard this. That power, we've been talking about riches. We've been talking about oppression. Someone has been given power. Belongeth unto God. And Paul writes about this. He says there's an order. There's God, Jesus, the husband, the wife, the children, and then the employer, and then the employee. And you can't break that. 
You can't take the power that God's given you. Okay, well, I deserve my own Thursday night out with the boys. And, you know, who cares about the family? You can't let the power go to your head. It belongs to God. You know, God has given me Sundays off and I deserve to sleep in. You don't have that. I mean, you have the free will. Also unto thee, God, O Lord, belongeth mercy. God giveth mercy. And he may give you an increase of riches. That's God's mercy. For thou, God, rendereth to every man according to his work. In the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, precious stone. Whatever you did for a work, get something. At the great white throne judgment, the books were open and men were judged by the works. And if their name was not found in the Lamb's book of life, they were cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. And you may say, well, you know, I know this guy. He was wicked and vile. And, you know, he's died and he got away with everything in his life. And I know this poor Christian, you know, he lived right and, you know, and, and, and humbled and, and he didn't get, everybody took, took, took advantage of him. Yeah, that's on this earth. Wait till we're standing before God one day. Well, this guy, you know, he went to jail and he didn't do it. God will wait out. And we will know who's guilty. Plain and simple. God will be a judge of all the earth. 